Today we are looking at another topic in the series of corporate level strategies and today we're looking at diversification in general. So even though diversification is kind of broad, we're looking at how diversification is carried out, diversification strategies is carried out by firms. All right, so the objectives for this chapter or this unit is to define, define corporate level strategy and discuss its purpose, describe different levels of diversification with different corporate level strategies, explain three primary reasons firms diversify, and describe how firms can create value by using a related diversification strategy. Also, you should be able to explain the two ways value can be created with an unrelated diversification strategy, Discuss the incentives and resources that encourage diversification and describe motives that can encourage managers to over-diversify a firm. Alright, so the opening case in the 12th edition of the textbook talks about General Electric. Now, General Electric competes in 16 different industries. They have appliance, aviation, consumer electronics, Electrical distribution, energy, entertainment, finance, gas, healthcare, lighting, locomotives, oil, software, water, weapons, and wind turbines. So we can see that that is a lot of different industries. GE's businesses are grouped in four divisions. You have GE Capital, GE Energy, GE Technology, Infrastructure, and GE Home and Business Solutions. With more than 50% of its annual revenue stemming from its financial services, GE is the only company that has listed in the initial Dow Jones Industrial Average in 1896 that remains on it today. That is basically the stock market. They do have some amount of criticisms because persons are saying that they have media control, that GE has restricted NBC reporters from her reporting on certain content that is critical of G General Electric. Also, poor environmental records of some of its businesses means that they're contributing to the pollution and greenhouse gases, etc. GE had reductions in stock value during the first decade of the 21st century. So those are just some criticisms. Today, a major player in the clean energy industry, General Electric is well positioned to capitalize on emerging economies, via a diversification strategy of mergers and acquisitions in Brazil and China. So as it relates to corporate level strategy, even though we have defined it before in the previous chapters, there are two key issues. So in what product markets and businesses should the firm compete and how should corporate headquarters manage these businesses? So when we talk about um, diversification, these are the two issues that we need to look at in terms of what businesses should affirm competing, in what product markets they should, they should complete, and how corporate headquarters manage these businesses, or what would, we would say the scope that they have to manage the business. So, Specific actions of a firm takes to gain a competitive advantage by selecting and managing a group of different business competing in different product markets. That is what co uh, corporate level strategy is. Corporate level strategy helps companies select new strategic positions that are expected to increase the firm's value. Also, firms can pursue defensive or offensive strategies that realize growth and may have different strategic intents. So some corporate level strategies, we have market development, moving into different geographic markets. We have product development, developing new products or significantly, Im significantly improving on existing products. We also have horizontal ver integration, which is the acquisition of competitors, horizontal movement at the same point in the value chain, which means that if you have a business that makes milk, you acquire another company that also makes milk. So that is horizontal. Then we look, there is vertical integration is also a corporate level strategy. We, do, we did that in the previous unit, and that is becoming your own supplier or distributor through acquisition, vertical movement up or down the value chain. And we did that in the last unit. What is the ultimate value question? 
as it relates to corporate level strategy. What is corporate level strategy's value? So corporate level strategy's value is ultimately determined by the degree to which the businesses in the portfolio are worth more under management of the company than they would under any other ownership. So a corporate level strategy is expected to help the firm earn above average returns by creating value. Diversification now is about growing into new business areas, either related, similar to your ex existing business, or unrelated, which is a completely different business. But it allows a firm to create value by productively using excess resources, and we look at that as we go along. The diversified firm operates in several different and unique product markets, and likely in several businesses. It forms two types of strategies, corporate level or company-wide, or business level strategies, which is just competitive and relates to a particular industry. For the diversified corporation, a business level strategy must be selected for each one of its business. And we know the business level strategies are cost leadership, differentiation, a combination of both are focused. One business level strategy, as we discussed in a previous unit, is a single product market, single geographical location. Firm employs one business level strategy and one corporate level strategy, identifying what or which industry the firm will compete in. If, you, if a firm has several business level strategies, then it means that a diversified firm employs a separate business level strategy for each product market area in which it competes and one or more corporate level strategies dealing with product and or geographic diversity. So product diversification is a primary form of corporate level strategies. It concerns the scope of the markets and industries in which the firm competes. So the ideal portfolio of business balances the diversification costs and benefits. And these are a reduction in property variability as earnings are generated from different businesses. The independence and flexibility to shift investments to those markets with, with the greater returns. So if one company within the group of companies is not doing very well, but another one is doing really well, then the company can decide to shift their investments over to the company that is earning above average returns. So for most of this unit, we will be looking at value creation, which is lower high levels of diversification, and it includes the sharing of resources, which is the related constraint strategy. We look at that. The transferring of core competencies across the firm's different businesses, which is the related link strategy, and managerial motives to diversify can actually destroy some of the firm's value. So these are like the main areas that we will be looking at in the unit. Okay, so now we will be looking at the levels of diversification. So we have low levels of diversification, moderate to high levels of diversification, and very high levels of diversification. We will discuss them in more detail as we go along, but you will see that for the single business, we have a dominant business that operates by itself, or even if it has a business that it kind of connected to, they, they make most of their money from the from one business. And then for related constraint, we see that company A, B, and C are connected. And for related link, we see that A and B are connected. B and C are connected, but A and C are not. And for high levels of diversification, now we have three completely different companies that does not share anything at all. They are not connected to anything at all. So we will look at these concepts in some more detail. All right, so the figure defines, that we just looked at, defines five categories of businesses according to increasing levels of diversification. Diversified firms vary according to their level of diversification and the connections between and among their businesses. The single and dominant business categories denote relatively low levels of diversification. More fully diversified firms are, are classified into related and unrelated categories. So... A firm is related through its diversification when its businesses share links across either products, technologies, 
or distribution channels and it could also be all three of them the more links among businesses the more constrained is the relatedness of diversification unrelated on the other hand refers to the absence of direct links between these businesses so first we look at low levels of diversification this is where a company uses a single business strategy the corporate level strategy in which the firm generates 95% or more of its sales revenue from its core business area. This is a single business strategy and they have a very low level of diversification. So as an example, we will look at Wrigley Junior Company, the world's largest producer of chewing and bubble gums. They historically used a single business strategy while operating in few product markets. In 2005, Wrigley employed the dominant business strategy when it acquired the confectionery assets of Kraft Foods, including Lifesavers and Altoids. In 2008, Wrigley was acquired by Mars, a privately held global confection company. Also, we have low levels of diversification that have a dominant business diversification strategy. It means that their corporate level strategy uh, generates 70 to 95% of the total sales revenue within a single business area. So, for example, UPS, United Parcel Service, uses this strategy. UPS generates 60% of its revenue from its U.S. package delivery business and 20% 2% from its international package business, with the remaining 18% coming from the firm's non-package business. We're moving now to moderate to high levels of diversification. So we have what we call the related constrained diversification strategy, and this is where less than 70% of revenue comes from the dominant business. These different companies have direct links, which means that they share products, technology, and distribution linkages between the firm's businesses. So example is Campbell Soup, Procter & Gamble, American Company, the Publix Group, and all of these companies, they have these group of companies, they have similar companies within the group of companies and they share products, technology, and distribution linkages. Still looking at moderate to higher levels, now we have related linked diversification strategy. And this can be mixed related and unrelated. So less than 70% of revenue comes from the dominant business. Mixed means that linked firms are sharing fewer resources and assets among their businesses compared with related constraint, concentrating on the transfer of knowledge and competencies among the businesses. For, so for instance, General Electric that we looked at at the start of the lecture. Then we have very high levels of diversification, which we call them unrelated now. So less than 70% of revenue comes from the dominant business. There are no relationship between the businesses. So we have United Technologies or Textron, Samsung and Hutchinson Limited, which these companies are owned by the same group of companies, or but they, they do not share any distribution channel or technology or products but they have a group of companies that within them the businesses within them are unrelated completely unrelated all right so what are the reasons for diversification now why do companies decide to diversify so we have three types of diversification strategies value creating value neutral and value reducing diversification so value creating diversification is about economies of scope the, in this way they can share activities and transfer core competencies so activities again could be their distribution channel the accounting systems that they use transferring core competencies would mean that they have the same um, experts working within the different firms and an, an expert in a particular area is not necessarily just assigned to one firm, but they share their core competences or their way of doing things. Also, companies diversify for market power, blocking competitors from through multi-point competition. Also, a part of this is vertical integration that we did in the last unit. And of course, 
they diversify for financial economies. And this is more suited when they're using an unrelated diversification strategy where they have different companies that are not related any at all. It, is the, it facilitates the efficient internal capital allocation, which we will look at later on, and also allows for business restructuring. Value neutral diversification now is about antitrust regulation, tax, law, tax laws, low performance, uncertain future cash flows, risk reduction for firms, tangible resources and intangible resources. Now the value neutral diversification means that the firm is diversifying even though they, they are not creating any additional value. They're not earning any financial economies. They're not gaining any market power necessarily. But because of these reasons, they maybe have exit barriers or that kind of thing, then they decide that, okay, we're going to diversify because, for instance, we have the resources to diversify, but it may ne not necessarily mean that we're going to earn any more money or become larger in the market and that kind of thing. Then we have value reducing diversification, which is about not earning, not only you're not earning any value or you're not creating any value, but you're reducing the firm's value by continuously diversifying, acquiring other companies, vertically integrating, whatever it is. And it is usually as a result of management trying to increase their own compensation or minimizing their employment risk, etc. And it is not necessarily a good business idea to diversify, but they still decide to diversify out of their own selfish reasons. So we have value creating, value neutral, and value reducing diversification. All right, so we're going back now to look at the value creating diversification strategies in a little bit more detail. So operational and corporate relatedness what is that now so by creating the diversification we have related constraint we have related link then we have unrelated diversification and then we can have both operational and corporate relatedness they are on a spectrum of high and low and the high is one side of the spectrum is whether they have operational relatedness, meaning that they share activities between business or whether they are able to transfer core competencies to business, which is the corporate relatedness. So we have operational relatedness, which is sharing activities between business, and we have corporate relatedness, which is about transferring core competencies between businesses. And it is on this scale that you would get to decide whether a company is using a related constraint diversification, whether they are unrelated or whether they are related linked. So firms create value by building upon or extending their resources, their capabilities and their core competencies. The purpose is to gain market power relative to their competitors. The advantage is economies of scope. An economies of scope is the cost saving that occur when a firm transfers capabilities and competencies developed in one of its businesses to another of its businesses. So it means that the new business don't have to start over from scratch trying to build their own capabilities and competencies because it was transferred for, from another company and that is what the economies of scope is. They could also have operational relatedness in sharing activities corporate relatedness in transferring skills or corporate core competencies among units. The difference between sharing activities and transferring competencies is based on how the resources are jointly used to create economies of scope. So what is our operational relatedness? As we had said before, it is about sharing activities. When you share activities, you can gain economies of scope. You are sharing primary or support activities along the value chain. For example, a primary activity such as inventory delivery system or a support activity such as purchasing is shared among the different companies. It is risky as ties create links between outcomes. Related constrain the shared activities in order to create value and it is not easy. Often synergies are not realized as planned. 
Corporate relatedness now is about transferring of core competencies. This is a complex set of resources and capabilities linking different businesses through managerial and technological knowledge, experience, and expertise. So there are two sources of value creation as it relates to transferring core competencies. Expense incurred in first business and knowledge transfer reduces resource allocation for the second business. Intangible resources, which are difficult for competitors to understand and imitate, so it makes it uh, the immediate competitive, gives them an immediate competitive advantage over their competition. Corporate relatedness again, transferring of core competencies. One way managers facilitate the transfer of corporate level core competencies is by moving key people into new management positions. However, the manager of an older business may be reluctant to transfer key people who have accumulated knowledge and experience critical to the business's success. Too much dependence on outsourcing can lower the usefulness of core competencies and thereby reduce their useful transferability to other business units in the diversified firm. Let us talk a little bit now about market power. Market power is relevant for related constraint and related linked. It exists when a firm is able to sell its products above the existing competitive level to reduce cost of primary and support activities below the competitive level or both. Related diversification strategy may include vertical integration with a backward or forward and also virtual integration. Market power is also about multi-market or multi-point competition. It exists when two or more diversified firms simultaneously compete in the same product or geographic market, for example, Google. Google is diversifying into new markets that allows it to engage in multi-point competition, example, competing with Microsoft and Apple in several markets. While Google appears to be increasing its vertical integration, many manufacturing firms have been reducing vertical integration to gain market power. The integration now is about developing independent supplier networks, the focus of many manufacturing firms such as Intel and Dell and Ford and General Motors. So now we are looking at simultaneous operational relatedness and corporate relatedness. This is the ability to simultaneously create economies of scope by sharing activities, which is the operational relatedness and transferring core competence, says which is the corporate relatedness. It is difficult for competitors to understand and learn how to imitate. It involves managing two sources of knowledge simultaneously, operational forms of economies of scope and corporate forms of economies of scope. Many such efforts often fail because of implementation difficulties. If the cost of realizing both types of relatedness is not offset by the benefits created, the result of this economies, it, the result is diseconomies because the cost of organization and incentive structure is very expensive. So for example, Walt Disney Company. Walt Disney Company has been able to successfully use related diversification as a corporate level strategy through which it creates economies of scope by sharing some activities and by transferring core competencies. Because this value creation can be difficult for investors to see, the value of the assets of a firm using a diversification strategy to create economies of scope often is discounted by investors. So unrelated diversification now creates value through two types of financial economies. Cost savings realized through improved allocations of financial resources based on investments inside or outside the firm, which we talk about now is the efficient internal capital market allocation, and also the restructuring of acquired assets. Firm A buys firm B and restructured, restructures its assets so it can operate more profitably, then A sells B for a profit in the external market. Efficient internal capital market allocation now. So in a market economy, capital markets allocate capital efficiently. The first is equity. Investors take equity positions, that is ownership, with high expected future cash flow values. 
Debt holders try to improve the value of their investment by taking stakes in businesses with high growth and profitability prospects. So the internal capital market is that in large diversified firms, capital distributions may generate gains from internal capital market allocations that exceed the gains that would accrue to shareholders from capital market being allocated to the external capital market, the capital being allocated to the external capital market. So efficient internal capital market allocation is about a conglomerate discount. This discount results from analysts not knowing how to value a vast array of large businesses with complex financial reports. Also, stock markets apply a conglomerate discount of 20% on unrelated diversified firms, which means that investors believe that the value of conglomerates is 20% less than the value of the sum of their parts. To overcome this discount, many unrelated diversifiers or conglomerates have sought to establish a brand for the parent company. Financial economies are more easily duplicated by competitors than are gains from operational and corporate relatedness. So it means that competitors can do what you do in terms of your financial economy economies but not necessarily from your operational and corporate relatedness. This issue is less of a problem in emerging economies where the absence of a soft infrastructure including efficient financial intermediate intermediaries, sound regulations and contract laws support and encourages use of the unrelated diversification strategy. So in emerging economies such as those in Korea, India and Chile, Research has shown that diversification increases the performance of firms affiliated with large diversified business groups. So restructuring of assets creates financial economies. A firm creates value by buying restructuring, then selling the restructured firm assets in the external market. An economic downturn can present opportunities but also some risk. So resource allocation decisions may become complex, so success often requires focus on mature, low-technology businesses and focuses on biz focus on businesses not reliant on a client orientation. A firm creates value by buying restructuring. That is saying same thing again. So related diversification gives you economies of scope, while unrelated diversification gives you financial economies. Different incentive, incentives to diversify exist and the quality of the firm's resources may permit only diversification that is value neutral rather than value creating. Incentives to diversify, external incentives are antitrust regulation and tax laws. Antitrust regulation really is about um, preventing a company from creating a monopoly, the thing that the company is getting too large, etc. And also internal ex incentives is about low performance, uncertain future cash flow, synergy and firm risk, risk reduction, which diversifying can help them to deal with some of those things within the firm, the low performance of the firm because they're having uncertain future ca cash flow and because synergy may cause the firm to reduce its risk if they have synergy with other related or unrelated businesses. Regulation antitrust laws in the 1960s and 1970s discouraged mergers that created increased market power, whether it's vertical or horizontal integration. Mergers in the 1960s and 70s thus tended to be unrelated. So in 1980s, relaxation of antitrust enforcement results in more and larger horizontal mergers. And in the late 1990s, now industry-specific deregulation spurred increased merger activity in banking, telecommunications, oil and gas, and electric utilities. For the early 2000s now, antitrust concerns, concerns seem to be emerging and mergers are more closely scrutinized. Tax laws now is about high tax rates on dividends cause a corporate shift from dividends to buying and building competences, 
companies sorry in high performance industries so we had america had tax reform in 1986 it reduced individual ordinary income tax rate from 50 to 28 percent it treated capital gains as ordinary income and thus creative in, created incentives for shareholders to prefer dividends to acquisition investments as the 1986 tax reform act diminished some of the corporate tax advantages of diversification low performance now is about high performance eliminates the need for greater diversification but low performance acts as an incentive for diversification so firms that are plagued by poor performance often take higher risks that is their diversification is risky all right so this graph is showing the curvilinear relationship between diversification and performance so we see that the dominant business may have a low performance but once a business is using the related constraint diversification strategy they will have a higher level of performance but as they become unrelated and using that diversification strategy then the performance may become low again or different companies that are using different strategies so it basically saying that the unrelated diversification can also result in low performance of the business or businesses uncertain future cash flows relates to diversification may be defensive strategy if the product line matures if the product line is threatened if the firm is small and is in a mature or maturing industry and when we say mature we mean that it probably it reached the peak that like there is no further to go it's not like the company can grow or the product can grow anymore it really has matured so um when they have uncertain future this causes uncertain future cash flow because there is no growth in the area not going to be earning any more money necessarily from this particular product let's talk now about synergy and risk reduction synergy exists when the value created by businesses work together working to the, together exceeds the value created by them working independently but synergy creates joint interdependence between business units a firm may reduce the level of technological change by operating in more certain environments resulting in more related types of diversification a firm may become risk averse constrain its level of activity sharing and forego potential benefits of synergy resulting in more unrelated types of diversification as it relates to resources and diversification now a firm must have both incentives to diversify and the resources required to create value through diversification like cash and tangible resources they must have both so value creation is determined more by appropriate use of resources than by incentives to diversify then we're going to look briefly now at the value reducing diversification strategy and this is related to managerial motives to diversify so top level executives may diversify in order to diversify their own employment risk as long as profitability does not suffer excessively so diversification adds benefit to top level managers but not shareholders this strategy may be held in check by governance mechanism or concerns for one reputation so the managerial motive to diversify is the managerial risk reduction and the desire for increased compensation so if the managers may feel like that if they are having more firms to manage then obviously their jobs would not be at risk and also if they're managing more firms their compensation would increase so just a summary of the relationship between diversification and the firm's performance overall so we have value creating influences value neutral influences and value reducing influences value creating influences are economy of scope market power financial economies while value neutral influences are incentives and resources and value reducing influences are managerial motives to diversify
then in the middle here we have the diversification and then the firm's performance which is affected by capital market intervention and the market for managerial talent and also internal governance and strategy implementation all right so that is it for unit six please to read the chapter in the textbook to understand it a little more this is not this is probably the only i would say a little bit complex unit in strategic management so you, you will be required to do some additional reading to really understand uh, the concepts discussed in this unit all right